Welcome back, hard forkers. I'm sure that clickbaity headline has uh, got many of you here. So we're going to uh, we're going to jump straight in and explain why this is the collusion, the manipulation episode. But don't worry, it's maybe not as bad as you might be thinking right now. Blue, something that you spoke about in our very first show, the uh, the Wyckoff distribution. Uh, sorry, uh, uh, have I got that wrong already? Is it a distribution or accumulation? <laughs> well, accumulation is when uh, institutional interests are accumulating. So the thought is that the price will increase. A distribution yep. is when they are offloading shares, taking profits, yep. and uh, the the market can't hold it up. So you're expecting downside. And I think we're seeing a little bit of a distribution here. But yep. the good news is, is you can kind of measure these things you can kind of understand where they can uh conclude as far as the next area of the trading range yeah. but it's pretty hard to ignore that we're we're kind of in a distribution right now yeah it's the, the it's kind of the talk of the town at the moment I've, i'm seeing sort of other traders being posed the question what are the, what do they think of the of wyckoff etc uh half of them don't appear to be familiar with it others are, are, are discounting it um you've been very very accurate in your calls on btc our last show a few days ago you, you called that dip back down we're sort of knocking on the door again um i'm a little bit more worried than i've been in a, in a long time so i'm going to hand it over to you to to maybe just remind the audience of, of what you have been seeing uh you know your methodology and what we'll, we'll take it from there sure let me go ahead and share my screen here whoops okay there we go. oops there we go um, yeah, so, you know, at its core, at its essence, all we're trying to do is price will always consolidate. We have an extension up and then we consolidate. So, you know, to kind of move Bitcoin out of the way here and just explain what it is that I'm talking about, you'll get an extension and you'll get a consolidation. You'll get an extension and you'll get a consolidation. And what the Wyckoff does is we just analyze the consolidation and we try to determine if the consolidation is a reaccumulation or a distribution. And at this point of, of where we are with Bitcoin, it's definitely, uh, it's proving to be a distribution. Now, what a distribution is, is it's the large institutional interests selling their shares. Uh, you often uh, see this at peak euphoria, you see this at peak strength, because the whales actually have to sell into strength. They can't, they don't have the luxury of a retail trader being able to short or, or sell out at the last second. They have to sell into strength. And because they're selling into strength, you get this sideways trading environment that's a little bit more volatile than what you would see inside of a reaccumulation. Um, so as we've said on this show before, you know, kind of what you're looking for is just that trend change. And when the trend changes, you need to reevaluate what's going on. So we've transitioned from higher highs and higher lows to lower highs and lower lows. So, you know, we're definitely needing to lean short term bearish right now. Um, a lot of people are sharing this type of uh, thing on YouTube and Twitter and they're sharing the distribution. Uh, a lot of people do kind of get it wrong, though, in the sense that they think that it's a pattern. Wyckoff isn't a pattern, you know, triangle, uh, triangle trading, that's a pattern, you know, cup and handle, head and shoulders, all that kind of stuff is a pattern. But Wyckoff is a series of events. And you'll kind of have these events fall within different phases of the accumulation or distribution. Um, and so, you know, if you try and follow it line by line, candle by candle, expecting it to do a certain thing, that often never works. In all forms of TA, there's nothing that really follows anything to a T. Um, at the end of the day, we're just interpreting what's going on in hindsight. You know, a lot of people fall into the trap thinking that they can predict the future with TA. You're interpreting the present with TA. So what we're seeing presently is we're seeing that there is offloading of shares. People are taking profits in Bitcoin and those individuals are high net worth individuals. So just a couple of things to clarify here. You know, is it a case of you be careful what you wish for? Are we all one of the institutions to come in? Are we, you know, I want to understand to what degree 
it, it's sort of direct manipulation or is it more the fact that they're, as you say, that it's just at certain points they need to sell into strength. So it's not like they're uh, a cartel has come together here and said, okay, at this price, we're going to, we're going to dump in short. Uh, could you maybe just, Give us some clarity around that because obviously, you know, I'm throwing the word manipulation around. So I'm just trying to better understand that. Yeah. And, you know, it's very common. It's a it's a criticism of the crypto space in general. <clears throat> I would argue that it is simply an effect of trading inside of an illiquid market from a grand from the grand scheme of things, you know, crypto is not the most liquid when compared to other markets. It's a small market cap sector. Mm -hmm. um, and if you're a whale, like you need to keep in mind, like there are Bitcoin holders that hold thousands of Bitcoin, they can move the market. And it's not necessarily that they're trying to manipulate you and screw you over. It's just they're trying to trade too. But they're really pigeonholed into certain behaviors where they don't want to see the market collapse. So they can only sell into strength. They can only mm. offload their bags when there's bullish price action. They can't jump in and out of this stuff without being noticed. So mm -hmm. for me, I don't think it's so much uh, about, uh, I'm gonna do this and I'm gonna trick them and I'm gonna you know get all the retail traders and steal all their money. It's like, no, I, I hold a lot of money here. Uh, I don't want to see this market go down. I need to lock in some of these profits, but for me to go and sell my bags would collapse the market. And, mm -hmm. and gotcha. nobody wants that, including the whale. So they need to pick their moments very strategically to be able to even be liquid mm. on the on the yeah. on the ask side. Yeah. So you were saying before that it's not actually a pattern, but you know, I'm seeing some sort of videos floating around where people are overlaying uh off onto Bitcoin's chart and it, you know, it's uh it was fairly, fairly compelling viewing one, one that I watched earlier today. Uh, have you got any comments on on that? I know a, a, a lot of people have seen that, that video. I think you know the one I'm talking about. Um, yeah. It's more so a sequence of events. So, yeah. you know, if you if you look at the pattern, a lot of people, you know, they they look at it and they get a perfect overlay, but they mislabel things trying to force it to look a certain way. Like when you get this first up thrust here, yeah. what you're what the pattern says is it's supposed to have a sign of weakness. Now, a sign of weakness is a lower low. We didn't actually get that, even though they called this a sign of weakness. So, you know, when you present something to people who are uneducated and you're making a video about it, uh, they tend to agree with you. And, uh, you know, it's, again, it's not a pattern. It's something that you really kind of need to study and, and take your time to really understand that this is a sequence of events. The first thing we got was an upthrust, but the upthrust resulted in a higher low. So for me, I wasn't worried. I was still thinking bullish. Then we got our other upthrust that was an upthrust after distribution. But at the time, I was not calling it that. It was simply just a higher high, which in my yeah. books is a good thing. However, it did kind of make a lower low. This is when I started to really, uh, this is actually the point at which I called Bitcoin neutral. I was like, okay, we have our first lower low here. We need to proceed with caution. Now, a lot of people were, were saying that this is the tail end of distribution. If they were you know, overlaying the pattern, they were saying the next stop is down. And then everybody got hopeful at this point. Uh, but for me, this was the LPSY, the last point of supply. So mm -hmm. it was following the sequence of events in a different way from what the pattern would show you. Um, so, you know, it's, yeah, again, it's, it's not a pattern. It's a sequence of events and we are confirming a distribution. We have confirmed a distribution in my opinion. So, um, downside targets, we can talk about the downside targets, but yeah, you know, it's, it's not just you draw a triangle here. And here's the yeah. breakout. It's a little more nuanced than that. Okay. Well, you've you've been uh, very much on the money, so to speak, in, in the shows I've done with you so far. So uh, I hate to say it, but give me that down, downside target. <laughs> yeah. So one of the tools that we use as uh, in the Wyckoff method is we employ the use of point and figure charts which is a very, it's one of the original styles of charting where basically you're just using X's and O's. It's very weird. It's very strange. A lot of people have probably, I'm sure most of people watching this 
probably didn't even know that TradingView could do this. <laughs> but basically, X's are up and O's are down. I'm not going to get into the full on uh, nuances of point and figure today. But what Wyckoff, Richard D. Wyckoff would do is he would do what's called a count. And mm -hmm. uh, this area right here is our distribution. Let me just highlight it real quick. So this is our distribution. It's 15 bars wide. We can do a count based on the on the distribution now that it has now that it has begun to confirm to the downside. So there's a calculation, there's a formula that kind of gives you the uh, the downside targets. And basically mm -hmm. what it is, is it's the it's the bars times the box size. So I'm using a traditional point figure box size of 500. So every one of these X's represents $500 uh, times the reversal. Again, we're not going to get too much into it. This is just the formula. Uh, anyways, the, the formula uh, yielded me a result of 22,500. So this count for the distribution uh, gave us a count of 22,500. And then you have a conservative target and an aggressive target for the downside. So the conservative target is 22,000 my uh, is the all time high minus 22,000, which gave us 41k. And then at the peak of the last point of supply, you, which was 58,500 minus again the count number, which is 22,5, which gives us 36,000. Mm -hmm. uh, so this is our target. We're not far off. We're almost there, really. Um, you know, we could wick right off of 41 and, and that's good. Uh, and we could head down to 36 and still be good. The point of these targets is not to kind of call the end or, or anything like that, but it is going to give us the area where we can expect a range to develop. Mm -hmm. If we are to follow previous cycles, uh, we probably are can head up to higher levels. So what the bullish case scenario of this kind of 41 to 36 K area would be is that we reaccumulate and this becomes a reaccumulation after distribution <laughs> and right. we head to the upside. Um, but yeah, as it stands right now, that's kind of the area of interest for me. That's uh, where I will be looking to close out my hedged positions yep. and, uh, and look to reevaluate the next range. Speaking of hedged positions, people, if you are an experienced trader, and I do stress experienced, uh, please support us and use the link to buy it below. There's a bunch of new promotions that have just come out. Uh, check out the notes for that. Um, yeah, I mean, I, uh, I, I'm sort of feeling neutral at a, a lot of my positions now uh, on Bybit where, where I do trade with <coughs> a bit of leverage. So this is fascinating for me. One thing I wanted to uh, also sort of put uh, in front of you here, just get your thoughts on, is um, obviously we've got these uh, futures uh, that, or sorry, options that are expiring today in a previous video. Well, I've actually spoken about this in a few videos. Um, I would love to hear your thoughts on this. So basically, the last couple of months, the price of Bitcoin has pretty much been bang on this max pain point. Um, and today, that max pain point is going to be 45K. So I'm fascinated to see whether uh, whether that's where we, we, we will sit. If, if it does, in fact, confirm, uh, that'll be sort of you know three months in a row. And it would also suggest maybe uh, Bitcoin will be 54k by the end of the month. So I just yeah, wanted to hear your thoughts on the uh, the options market and how that might be involved in the price of Bitcoin. Yeah, um, you know, the options. So there's those that purchase the options contract. Most retail uh, is of the uh, they're on the purchasing side. And then the market maker makers are the writers. Uh, if I write you an options contract, my goal is your contract expires worthless and you pay me all your premium that uh, was required to purchase that contract. So if you're a market maker, if you're a big mover inside of this space and you do have the ability to at least suppress um, the price or control the price within some sort of uh, degree of uh, ability somehow, I mean, we're pretty darn close to max pain. Um, 
it's in your best interest to do that. So I did start off saying that the whale isn't really manipulating and they're kind of looking for opportunities to sell. I think that the exchanges, we could argue, uh, might have a little bit more of an interest on the manipulation side when we're talking about options contracts and stuff like that. And for those who don't mm. know what the max pain price is, you hear the word max pain and you think it's just suppression. <clears throat> it's the if you're uh, purchasing a call option, you think it's gonna go up. If you're pur purchasing a put, you think, you think it's gonna go down. There's a winner on each side of every trade, uh, but the max pain is where nobody wins. It's like the least profitable position for both long and shorts. So that's what it means when they say max pain. It's like nobody wins on that one. So uh, the writers, the market makers are very interested in seeing you pay for contracts for nothing. Yeah. Okay, well, that's just a, another interesting one to uh, have a close eye on today, people. Um, yeah, so obviously, my next question, uh, we are seeing these alts just pop up, pop off. I mean, we, we, I think the one we looked at the other day, what did we look at, Matic? That's just skyrocketed again. <laughs> Matic is on an absolute tear. Absolutely. Yeah, I, mean, I, 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 did I don't even want to tell people that. to take profits anymore because I tell them to take profits and like, dude, it doubled. <laughs> so you know what? You do you. You'd be happy with whatever you're happy with. You know, T calling the top is one of the hardest things to do. It's way easier to call the top in hindsight, but you give up like 40 percent of your gains after doing that. So you really do have to kind of pick points where you're mm -hmm. happy to scale out. Because if you're going to ask me, I'm going to say, yeah, it's overheated. I'd take profits. <laughs> have, but, you got, have you got the you chart just... there, by, by the way? Matic? I can pull up Matic. Sure. It's, yeah, it's, it's got to be it's a $20 been my, $20 been my by my now. golden child for, for a while <laughs> yeah. now. But I, I, it's carrying, I took a little bit of profit portfolio. off the table this morning. A little yeah. bit. It all depends on your time parameters and what, what you're, uh, you know, like <sighs> Polygon is killing it, honestly. On the fundamental side, Polygon is killing it. Now, a lot of that is uh, going into the price appreciation. Um, but, yeah, it really depends on what kind of a, a trader you are. But uh, Well, for, for me, this one was an investment. Uh, I've not traded. Yeah. I've had no stop loss. I believed in the fundamentals. We've, it's one we yeah. cover extensively <laughs> on the channel. Um, we're, we're on possibly a little concern now is you know if you look at the market cap of it where you know it's heading for the top 10 here i think it's up around 16 billion out of nowhere um yeah you know how much more upside is there is it a is it a top three coin for me probably not but uh yeah i think it does does warrant a place in the top 10 maybe if i compare it to a light coin um i would argue that it would be much more suitable up, up, up around those levels so yes i mean for me it's still probably got some room to run <laughs> Yeah. Um, Will it triple, this it, kind triple of or quadruple again? Probably not. <laughs> yeah. So for this kind of stuff, you know, I like I like markets where I can kind of lock in prices. Matic, you know, uh, I think you can only really short it on Binance, and Binance isn't really great. You would uh, have to do cross margin on it but uh yeah it's you don't want to get too complicated with it too you're better off just waiting for the top to come in but let's say you know if you did a 1x short right here you lock mm. in the price you lock yep. in 240. so yep. if it goes down it's it's covering your losses if it goes up you're not making any more money you're just locking mm. in 250. 240. Yeah. Uh, not really recommended for those that don't really understand what that means or what or how to do that. Uh, really, any futures or derivatives trading should be used for those that have been trading this market for, in my opinion, in excess of, you know, th at least three to five years. Yeah. Um, but uh, yeah, you know, there's there's clever little tricky things that you can do, or you can just chill and just know that uh, most of DeFi will eventually be on layer two and the likelihood that uh, layer two is heavily involved with Matic is seemingly quite plausible. Well, Aave's over there, way, isn't it? Um, M Stable is over there. Yeah. Uh, there's, there's a ton of, uh, it's just, it's really plugging in as, mm. as the layer two for DeFi. And yep. uh, I think uh, congratulations to anybody holding Matic. I'm not one of them. I actually oh. hated the Matic oh. chart down at the bottom. 
<laughs> Let me show you. And, you know, I got to justify that's, that's myself. That's why we combine a, a few technicals with fundamentals on the show. Uh, here, here, belief. So, <laughs> yeah. And I'm, I'm, I'm pleased what? to hear that you're, you're, uh, you've understood the fundamentals of Axie Infinity uh, as well, and you've, uh, you've spent, spent a few days breeding. So we'll, we'll have a brief chat on that as well uh, shortly. Yeah. I've actually done a, a video with Baloo. You can check that out. Uh, that'll be up tomorrow on, uh, on AXS on Axie Infinity. Yeah, that was an that was an awesome uh, chat. You know, I learned well, a lot. You know, now I, I, I think I've got reason more I brought questions. that up. You know, fundam fundamentally for me, I've I've understood Matic. I've got it. Um, I'm I'm sort of putting Solana uh, and uh, Kusama in that same boat now. You know, that they're fundamental plays for me. I've I've uh, increased my positions in both of those. I'm I'm holding sort of longer term. Yes, uh, I do uh, do trade on the daily on on buy, but uh, with ten percent of my stack. But I've actually come out of a, a huge amount of my alts that, for me, uh, <laughs> it's. I mean, you know, the top tier alts have, have been popping, so I'm quite yeah. comfortable playing playing in that zone at the moment, rather than the the micro caps. So I entered Matic. Oh, this is almost so painful. I entered here, okay, at one cent at one point six cents. Wrote it up here, capitulated, got stopped out. I then entered again on the recovery here at an even better, pro oh no, about the same at 1.6, came up, stopped out again. Uh, after that, I was just like, you know what? This chart makes no sense to me. Like this is a trader's nightmare. This is just yeah. pure chop. And uh, I took it off the watch list. I was like, delete, you're done. I'm, I've had enough of you. And uh, here we are. So you know what? Uh, having a healthy amount of fundamentals and understanding what these things really do um, can be very, very beneficial. So you know, back, yeah. uh, back your stuff up, back your trades up with fundamentals. Just on that note, you, people, uh, I've, I've been called. calling Kasama out for for a number of weeks now. The parachain auctions are uh, getting underway. There, I, I think there's got more upside. Maybe we can have a look at that. Uh, that chart today also blue. Uh, do, do you have a Kasama chart? Is that one you you look at? No, it's not. Uh, that's on Polkadot, right? Uh, well, it's it's effectively the test net of well, was the test net of Polkadot. So you get a lot of these projects that 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 have gone from a uh, couple of different protocols then on to uh, Kasama, and ultimately, so I think some projects will end up on Dot. Um, they are effectively the same technology, um, I, I believe, because. Uh, Kusama is actually quicker. Uh, it's more sort of the the people's chain I, is the way I would put it. Whereas dots, uh, I, I think the vision here is it's much more of an enterprise uh, sort of solution blockchain. Yeah, you got a nice buy signal on it at around five twenty five, five twenty. Um, mm -hmm. It's extended. I, I, you know, if we continue with our bearish trend, I wouldn't be surprised for us to come back down to that level and retest. Mm. Uh, that's going to be a very important test if we do do that. Um, so if we do retrace, you know, watch out for that. Although it did kind of already test uh, if we break above 600 with commitment on the daily. So if you see a daily candle close above 600, uh, I think, you know, you're in a healthy, you're in a healthy trend with some more upside. Um, mm. But, you know, so like 500 to 600, uh, just kind of buy the breakout or buy the dip on this one. Right. It's really, you know, it, it falls back on Bitcoin's shoulders too right now. I think if we get a shakeout, it's going to put the alts on pause. Yeah. Yeah. That was the uh, the next topic of, of conversation. Um, any thoughts? I, I know I sort of jumped off Bitcoin there, but just coming back to it briefly, any thoughts on us? Uh, I mean, we closed the weekly candle, I think pretty much bang on the 21 week moving average um an important moving average for many it's closing uh closing a weekly candle below in the past has sort of signaled a, a bear market um that's where we're at at the moment the, we're, we're obviously sitting below it at the moment any thoughts around a weekly close below that 21 uh, ma and what ramifications that may have how does that factor into your thinking um i I don't really give moving averages that much weight, honestly. Yep. Um, I think every model is useful, but every model is also wrong. 
Sure. Uh, you can use them as a tool. You can use them to help you make decisions. But at the end of the day, what we do with technical analysis is uh, we're just seeing what people did. We're seeing what people are doing. We can't see what people are going to do. Yeah. Um, so if we break the 21, it's not, oh, we broke the 21, we're done. It's we broke the 10, 21. I want to see what people do. I want to see how people react to that. Mm. So um, for me, I don't, I, I really don't use much uh, in terms of the moving average stuff. We do have uh, an indicator that we, uh, that uh, Matthew has brought into our group that uh, uh, he uses. But again, the moving average is just showing you the momentum of the price. Yeah. The price itself is the only uh, real time indicator that you have price and volume. Everything else is a lagging indicator. So you can get false signals on these lagging indicators. Um, yeah. And, you know, if we are talking the topics of manipulation, the manipulators love false signals. Um, oh, yeah. So for me, I don't give it too much gravity. I just go with support resistance and uh, and uh, watching how the price develops after something scary or something bullish occurs. Sure. Okay. So let's have a look at ETH. Uh, I'd love yeah. to hear your, your thoughts on if we really do uh, have that big leg down here in Bitcoin. Um, trying to understand what, what ETH and the alts may do. Yeah, so... is the biggie. Over, overall, I mean, the alts, especially the ETH chart here, we're making higher highs and we're making higher lows. This is good. You know, we're nowhere near calling any sort of distribution or anything. Uh, when we're looking at this chart, we're simply having a pullback, a pullback mm. in an uptrend. We've made a higher high, and this pullback has a lot of room to yield us a higher low. So structurally speaking, it's m in a much healthier position than Bitcoin. Um, what, I've got some that, pretty... What is that uh, target there that you've got drawn? This is just the last area of support. Um, and this is right at around twenty six, twenty five hundred dollars okay. Um, I'd love to, I have bids there. I would love to see those bids be filled, uh, but they don't have to. Uh, we're gonna have to see what happens. If Bitcoin really takes a scary move down, we might get a wick down there. But I think that the altcoins are really kind of currently healthy. Uh, mm -hmm. We are seeing pullbacks, but when we compare their strength against Bitcoin, they're clearly the the leader, not the lagger. Mm. Yeah. Okay. Interesting times, Baloo. <laughs> so if we were to, you know, start off our uh, trading range here, we don't even have one yet. So it's way too early to call distribution. Let's say we do rally off of this level. This is our buyer's climax and this is our automatic reaction. So we have a lot of price candles to print before we can talk about a distribution. Right. So there's there's really we got a lot of room. We, there's there's nothing to say that this is uh, there's nothing to say that this doesn't just continue and we keep heading up. You know, mm. there's we don't have enough information. The only uncertain thing in the space right now is Bitcoin. The alts look really bullish. Um, and it's tricky because, you know, if you're, if you've been holding in this market for a long time, you're kind of not sweating so much. It's the market participants that are showing up now that are really getting chopped up. Yep. They're probably selling, you know, they probably bought the top, they held too long. Now they're selling too low. Now they're looking for entries into alts. The altcoins may have a bullish setup. They may have bullish follow through. Then Bitcoin spoils the party. It's very much so an experienced traders market right now. Mm. When Bitcoin isn't behaving, like we, we need to, you really need to be aggressive. I've tried to kind of communicate this in my, uh, in my own communicate, uh, in my own community, just, you know, if you're going to take these positions, have stops. And that's that's kind of just uh, stops. I don't even really like stops that much, but you kind of have to have them in this environment. Yep. And if you're going to have them, they have to come after a dip. So you got to buy that fear. It's really, it's a hard market to be trading as a new investor right now. If you are mm. a new person trying to be a trader right now, you're you're cutting your teeth on some hard rocks here. It's really, it's tough. Yeah. 
Well, I'm experienced, and uh, yes, it, it, it is tough for me to pick. I mean, as I say, my, my strategy uh, over the last month is, is to have moved into those top tier alts, uh, and that's paying off. That's, that's going quite well, and it was of note that we didn't, you know, the, the retracement in them when we've had that Bitcoin dip wasn't actually that bad. You know, it really was the micro caps that got hurt, and I was happy to be out of the, the bulk of those. So yeah. is there anything else that's sort of sparking your fancy at the moment, so to speak? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> EOS. EOS. Oh, okay. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't hate it, don't date it, just trade it. Yeah, so, absolutely. Um, that's that's the thing, isn't it? A lot of a lot of people get caught up. We've seen all this tribalism lately with Elon Musk yeah. and so forth, but we're talking making money here, people, yeah. trading. You can, you can hate the damn thing, but still yeah. make money out of it. Yeah. Another one of those is kind of XRP as well. Yeah. Um, totally. But I want to focus on EOS right now. Uh, okay. EOS kind of, you know, woke up a little bit. We kind of got our sign of strength. Uh, we're looking at EOS on the weekly, uh, on the logarithmic scale on Bitcoin. So kind of a, an interesting chart, not a very common chart that I go to. Uh, but we got this very clear downward sloping line of resistance and we got a break on the weekly. So this is a bullish break. This is a confirmed break. Now, do we need to come back down and test this area on the Bitcoin pair? Uh, really hard to say. But the point is this break is pretty bullish and I'm looking for positions. I don't hold any right now. But um, I'm looking for a nice position. Again, you know, we're in a very tricky market right now. So I need to make sure that my entry is a rock star entry. I have to wait for a dip. I have to wait for good confirmation on support. I got to wait for bullish divergence. Like there's a lot of parameters that have to come into play for me to be convicted to a trade in this environment. Mm. And I'm just patiently waiting. You know, the weekly, it's a slow moving chart. We'll see how things kind of develop. But um, yeah, it's, uh, it's pretty pretty bullish break here of a very long term trend line. So okay. it's definitely worth noting, regardless of what they're actually doing. I don't know. I don't think they're doing anything, but we're seeing a lot of follow through in those older coins. You know, uh, V Chain was kind of the leader of the old coins. V Chain's been doing very well. Uh, Tron, uh, Ethereum Classic did some nonsense pump for no reason. Um, mm just we're seeing a lot of rotation go into these older established projects uh you know established in their presence in the ecosystem maybe not so much in their development but um they exist and people are trading them and mm. things are happening that's, yeah, that's just a uh, heads just a heads up people uh this has just been listed on bybit as well in the last couple of weeks and also a uh, a number of other coins have uh just come on to that market uh so let me just let you know which one's here but yeah you also mentioned xrp blue i, I assume we're going to have a look at that chart is that is that the case i i just mentioned it but let's go ahead and look at it <laughs> xrp you know what let's try and do the same thing i have i actually haven't looked at this chart xrp btc let's see what xrp btc looks like uh, logarithmic um, break out on the weekly. Yeah, it's okay. It's not as it's not a clean as it's not as clean of a setup as I would have liked to have seen. Let's okay. go back to the good old U.S. dollar fiat bullcrap. XR, XRP. I actually traded extensively back in in two seven eight. And the funny thing with XRP, it struck me back then. It w w almost inversely moved against bitcoin stellar and, and xrp mm. and 217 were totally the inverse of the rest of the market it was very odd yeah so i, I do wonder if bitcoin has a dip whether uh, xrp reverts back to that action and doesn't yeah only time will tell yeah um so when i'm looking at this you know we've kind of uh it's kind of not super clear uh that's not uh I'm not gonna explain why I did that, but uh, here's our range bound condition here. Uh, if we get a daily candle close above this level right here. Yeah. If we get a daily candle close above the buyer's climax candle close, I think you're in a safe position to be a, a buyer here. Um, XRP, 
I just, it's one of those coins you love to hate. I don't, it goes against a lot of what makes me excited in blockchain, but right. for those XRP community members out there that have been waiting for XRP to, you know, be in a position that is poised for price appreciation. I think those conditions are going to be met um, sooner rather than later, uh, based off of what I'm seeing in the charts here. So, you know, I'm going to say what I see in the charts and what I'm seeing is uh, the potential for a bullish setup here. So if you're holding XRP, I think you're going to finally get to be loud and proud about it. <laughs> <laughs> That, that community certainly is loud and proud, isn't it? With yes. Well. Yes. <laughs> yeah. So uh, obviously, we've had uh, probably more tribalism in the last week than in the last year combined with this whole Elon Musk drama. Any any uh, thoughts and comments on what what's gone down there? Uh, you know, my only thought is just how remarkable that you can draw comparisons cycle to cycle. Uh, last cycle, it was uh, John McAfee. You know, John McAfee was the tweet wizard. <laughs> he was the guy that would make or break your project. And this time it's Elon Musk. You know, there's a lot of parallels that could be drawn towards, uh, you know, certain events that occurred inside of, uh, the market as it develops, uh, you know, crypto kitties was a thing. I don't know. Is that going to be Axie? I don't know. We'll see. Um, but, uh, you know, there's a lot of interesting parallels that you can draw. So as far as the, the, uh, the guy, the entity, the person of this cycle, if we're comparing who is the John McAfee of this cycle, I think it's Elon Musk for sure. <laughs> there you go. I've actually had John on this, uh, this channel a few times. Oh yeah, he's yeah. an interesting cat. <laughs> he is. He's uh, yeah. unfortunately in a Spanish prison at the moment. So, uh, oh, is he? So, yeah, I've been doing keeping up with the whole yeah. McAfee legacy. Yeah, no, he got arrested in Spain uh, a few months back on a U.S. Okay. extradition warrant, mm. and I think he's been charged with tax evasion and uh, I believe market manipulation as well for promoting. ICO is not the clearing payments, etc. I, I think is one of the charges. I, I really personally like John. He was, uh, yeah, um, he was doing that during the ICO boom. I remember it. You know, yeah. I I kind of fell into the trap and followed him on Twitter. And if he tweeted about something, you needed to go. You needed to go, and you needed to buy it. It's like, where is this thing? Where is it? Oh, it's on. Uh, it's on Cryptopia. I got to go get this bullshit on cryptopia it's because john right. mcafee's tweeting about it it's, you know, i can <laughs> empathize with what people are going through right now with um what's going on with elon musk uh you know if history is to repeat itself it's all going to go away and you really shouldn't take financial advice from twitter wizards you shouldn't even take it you, you shouldn't take financial advice from anyone including ourselves really what the the turning point for any trader uh in my experience and what i've heard is the point at which you start to make your own decisions. You need a mentor, you need people to lean on, you need to have an understanding of the ins and outs, but yep. you it's a means to an end. And you really need to make your own decisions. And when you convict to your own decisions and you don't listen to other opinions, that's the turning point in your success mm. uh, from, yep. from what I believe. Um, so, you know, if you're getting everything from an Elon Musk uh, tweet, it's it will work until it doesn't and then when it doesn't it's gonna hurt <laughs> yep yep it's all about controlling your emotions people and uh look tell me i'm getting some really good food feedback on your group can you just you know if people there's a link below if you want to go and check it out but could you just briefly explain to people what they can expect if they if they if they join the the crypto jungle yeah so what we do in the crypto jungle is we really kind of nurture exactly what i just said you know we we want you to be a trader you know it's kind of almost a crappy business model because my goal is to get you to the point where you don't need me but we are an educational we're an educationally focused group that really focuses on psychology uh controlling your emotions understanding the market cycles and where you are 
all through the lens of the Wyckoff method. And we have, uh, you know, other methods inside of the group as well, but I'm a Wyckoff trader. So, you know, there's a, there's a heavy uh, presence of the Wyckoff method inside of the group. And it's just about helping you, you know, time the market a little bit better and, yeah. and uh, hone in your expectations and, and your, just uh, your expectations really just make you a little bit more realistic and uh, have the right time parameters, have the right uh, price parameters and don't just buy something at a, at pennies and wait for 10 bucks. You know, you know, uh, allow the market to tell you because the market is the biggest teacher you have. And uh, we nurture your ability to kind of know yep. that the market is the best teacher you have. Yeah, absolutely. So, look, I, I'd encourage everyone to go check that out. Um, I, I think having those other people to bounce around, uh, you know, your ideas, hear their ideas on the regular is a very valuable thing to be a part of. Uh, so, yeah, the link below, people, go, make sure you go and check that out. I'm getting some very good feedback on your group. So, Baloo, anything else we wanted to share with the audience before we uh, wrap it up? And I... See how many people go, go for the horrible clickbait headlong and I'm, I'm going to use today? <laughs> <laughs> no, you know, I, I have a lot of uh, alts that I'm looking at through my rotation. I mm -hmm. think now is a good time to be building a list. You know, you should go, go on the exchange that you're trading on, find out all the coins that kind of interest you, put them on a watch list and just yep. start siphoning through them and looking at the potential, look at, at the setups and try to understand, you know, plan your next move because I don't think there's a move presently. If you're in positions, we're not seeing anything in the charts that's telling you to kind of uh, get out of those positions, except for some of these ones that are doing extraordinarily well, like Matic. Uh, you know, it, we're we're in very uh, aggressive price appreciation, so you know. I'm not going to tell you to close positions, but I think it's a, a healthy habit to kind of trim profits. Depends on your, what your uh, strategy was going into it. But uh, yeah, formulate a plan because there are plenty of coins that are looking bullish and setting up, but they may not be in the best opportunity right now because Bitcoin does need to kind of behave. I do think we need a little bit of uh, a shakeout, one last little flush to kind of scare all of the the, the new people who are joining uh, crypto just now. And then we can reevaluate what the next move will be. Um, so, you know, if Bitcoin dumps, that's that's go time. If it's, you know, you'll see the support on your coins that you're looking at and you'll have those bids ready and you'll be you'll be ready for the next extension or at least you'll be ready for a dead cat bounce. Both are good and they both give you time to reevaluate what's going on. So I think that there is some good opportunities coming up. Yeah. I haven't heard that word dead cat bounce since, since uh, early 218. It, it just sort of shiver up my spine, Blue. <laughs> <laughs> It, yeah, I mean, you know, when you have an exuberant rally in a downtrend, that's what it is. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> okay. Yes. So I guess in summary, um, would you say you're concerned about where Bitcoin's heading at the moment? Well, I mean, obviously we're traders, so it really, in many respects, doesn't make any difference to us what way something moves if we know how to trade it. But um, I still think you know, bigger picture here, looking at the stock to flow model, I, I still feel we're, we're on track, but yeah, I'm not, uh, certainly not discounting that, that, that break of that 40 K level. Yeah. Um, I'm waiting for some targets that are at lower levels. Uh, yeah. I've got my bids placed. I don't think this market is over. Uh, but that is more so just a comparative analysis. It's more just looking at the on-chain data and that's more just so anecdotal. If we are strictly trading technical, the technical is lower highs and lower lows and that will continue until it doesn't. Mm. But I do think that there's going to be opportunities for recoveries and uh, the recoveries are really gonna tell us a lot when they do in fact happen. We need a mm. flush. We need to see these lower targets hit so that we can see what the next move is. Yep. Um, right now, we're just kind of waiting for that move. Okay. Now, I hope that's been uh, helpful for you all today, people. I've uh, I've been all ears. I'm uh, 
Yeah, I'm treading lightly at the moment. Obviously, you know, some of some of my other projects, Solana, Kasama, have, have had really good runs. Uh, I think fundamentally they're, they're great buys, but obviously I know that a lot of this is going to be tied to any major move in Bitcoin. So, yeah, some sleepless nights may be coming up for me watching this intently. But listen, mate, thanks so much for your time today. Uh, really enjoyed Very making welcome. the with you. Uh, now, obviously, if you don't know, Blue's got his own channel. I encourage every, absolutely everyone to go and sign up for that. He does, uh, I believe it's three shows a week, isn't it, live? Yep, every yep. Monday, Wednesday, and Friday at uh, 12 p.m. Eastern Standard Time, so New York time. Yep. Excellent, yeah. mate. So, listen, thank, thanks so much for that. Links, links below to all his uh, social media as well. And uh, we'll see you all very soon. Thanks for watching. Cheers now.